I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of beware witchcraft in progress. Beware. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latin Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. The devil is at the end of its kingdom, and it is angry, the devil being the rulers of this last wicked kingdom. Also, the wicked of the nation of Israel know that their time is coming to an end as well. And so from the inside and from the outside of our nation, we have battles. We have enemies and the wicked. We are surrounded by enemies and the wicked. On the most famous web browser, there was a artistic painting of a man named Marsha P. Johnson. And when you hit this painting on this web browser, it took you to the biography of Marsha P. Johnson. Marsha P. Johnson is half male, half female. So in this society today, the witchcraft is, well, if that's how this person feels, who are we to judge? And the, and the serious witchcraft of St. John chapter 3, verse 16, for the most high power so loved the world. So, you know, there's this belief that the Father loves and accepts everyone and is happy with everyone. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is... The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11. The Most High Power judgeth the righteous, and the Most High Power is angry with the wicked every day. That's the truth. The Father is angry with the wicked every day. And what's one of the reasons why the Father is angry with the wicked? The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 18. The wicked worketh a deceitful work. That's why. That's why. There is now a petition being signed for Marsha P. Johnson to have a statue in New York City. Marsha P. Johnson was an Israelite man, by the way. This is how they are going to honor an Israelite man. Who knows? Maybe this brother found his way back home at the end. We pray for his soul. But they want to take his wickedness and put it on display to replace the statue of Christopher Columbus. You have to understand something. These statues that you have watched being pulled down in Mystery Babylon and in other places on the earth, they have been allowed to be pulled down. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 23, a wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Here, we'll give you some statues. We'll name some things after you. Just don't ask us to stop killing the righteous. <laughs> Just don't ask us to stop killing the righteous. Take these statues, Take these parks and these streets and these plazas named after your movement and make your people think everything's okay. You only get a statue when you are being honored or worshipped. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. So the wicked of the other nations who our confederate against the nation of Israel are joined together with the wicked of the nation of Israel. 
and in this union they have decided to destroy the masculine image they have decided to destroy it this word is out about Yahushai, our king of kings our lord of lords our savior our high priest our brother the word is out the truth has been revealed that he is a dark-skinned man a so-called black man let's see what the wicked are doing with this information verse 12 the wicked plotteth against the just so there is a painting in saint albans church in the united kingdom one of the oldest churches in the uk and they have the last supper now with a black christ so in this taking this gift out of the bosom the wicked and the enemy get to say well no you said that christ is a black man so um here he is now when you look by the way simply type in last supper black christ saint albans church and, and hit images you'll see this thing so here he is all by himself in the middle only dark-skinned person in the painting no beard well that's a sin he's got to wear that beard no hair not supposed to cut all the hair off your head not supposed to make your head bald the book of saint matthew chapter 24 verse 5 for many shall come in my name saying i am the anointed and shall deceive many so here is being presented to us our savior our king of kings who looks effeminate that's what the last seven years have been about killing off the male image literally choking the masculine israelite male life to death in order to replace it with an effeminate energy I mean, after all, they just came out of Pride Month, right? The book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous, whom Yahweh abhorreth. So the wicked run around saying, oh, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is how it's going to be for me. I want to do it this way. And they bless those that covet, those that want what other people have, that want what they can't have you can't be male and female in the same body you can't do it whom yahweh abhorreth verse 4 the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after the most high power the most high power is not in all his thoughts and that's the truth they're not thinking about the father at all at all because of their pride. I get what I want. I get it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm lawless. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. They're making statues for me. Statues. They're going to honor me. Huh. I shall be worshipped. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 32. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. This is why we must be cautious, very, very cautious. There is a trap and a cord that's tightening around the nation of Israel, where either you say, I am fully for this place of wickedness, or I am fully against this place of wickedness. No in between. They are looking to slay off all the righteous. And we must pray to the Father every day. The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 8. Lead me, O Yahweh, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies, enemies inside the nation of Israel, enemies outside the nation of Israel, enemies surrounding the nation of Israel, waiting to slay all the righteous. Think about it for a minute. They start putting statues of transvestites up. Your child comes to you and say, wow, that person's got a statue. What great thing did they do? What are you going to say? 
Lead me, O Yahweh, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. No question, that well-lit path. That well-lit path. Verse 9, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Just because they're of your nation, just because they're the same color as you, the same bloodline as you, that doesn't mean there's faithfulness in them. A lot of them want to be wicked. They'll smile and say, yes, I'm, I'm, all, about, I'm all about righteousness. God is good all the time. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sceptular. They flatter with their tongue. Oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, God's going to take care of everything. We got to put it in God's hand and this and that and the other thing. They flatter, but their inward parts are evil and wicked. So, so to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, of the one third, the men, women, and children, the true believers, the remnant, we were told that these would be perilous times. They are perilous times. And we must pay attention. We must pay attention. And again, this is not hate speech. This is us informing our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel of the correct path we are to walk given to us, the nation of Israel, by our Father. Even speaking this truth is perilous nowadays. It's dangerous, but it must be done. There is witchcraft in progress to destroy the masculine Israelite male energy to destroy it and in so doing it's the equivalent of trying to destroy our king of kings and the one who sent him so be very cautious and there's a level of bravery that is going to be needed at this time because there's no in between you're either going to have to you're either going to have to acknowledge these statues that go up all over the earth and say, yay, yay, yay. And in so doing, it's the equivalent of trying to destroy our king of kings and the one who sent him. So be very cautious. You are either going to have to confess that you support all of it, every last bit of it, and that you embrace this world and all its wickedness. Or you're going to have to pick the Father's path. Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.